Welcome to Show Me Cooking. In today's video, I'm gonna show you guys how to hard boil stuff. Step one, take your pot, put it over the fire. Step two, take your 762 by 39, put it in the pot, and then you're gonna boil it. Wait, what? Hey guys, welcome back to Show Me Firearms. And that's right, in today's video, I'm gonna be boiling some 762 by 39 in a pot over a little campfire. But why in the heck would I wanna do this? What on earth is the point? So this whole idea of boiling ammunition actually started during the Soviet-Afghan War from 1979 to 1989. During that war, while the Soviet troops were engaged in this conflict in Afghanistan, they were very undersupplied. Now, in an effort to deal with their lack of supplies, the Soviet troops would trade the only thing of value that they had with the Afghan merchants, and that was their ammunition. But the fear among the Soviet troops was that, well, if we trade this ammunition with these merchants, eventually it's gonna end up in the hands of the enemy. So what do we do about this? So the solution that the Soviet troops came up with was to boil their ammunition over a campfire for a good four or five hours before they would trade it with the merchants. The theory behind boiling the ammunition was that it would deactivate it, but the fact that it was immersed in water would prevent the ammunition from cooking off. Now that's exactly what I want to put to the test in today's video. Does boiling ammunition actually deactivate it? Right now, I'm gonna say no. I don't think boiling the ammo is gonna do anything to it because modern ammunition is very resilient to environmental factors. So I don't think boiling is gonna do anything to it. But there's only one way to know. So I'm gonna get a little fire going here. We'll take our pot, fill it with water, and then add our 762 by 39, boil it for four hours, and then see if it is actually deactivated. All right, guys, I've got a nice little campfire going here. Now, I'm gonna have to put the ammo over the fire a little bit earlier than what I was wanting, because I do believe I have a storm coming in. So, I'm gonna get the fire going nice and hot, put the ammo on it, and then hopefully the fire will stay going through any rain that we might have. So yeah, I'll go get the, uh, the pot, the water, and the ammo, and then we'll see if this Soviet boiling ammo myth can actually deactivate some 762 by 39. Okay, we've got our pot about half full with water. Go ahead and put that over the fire. Now, of course, the water isn't boiling just yet, and through the research I was doing, I wasn't able to find out whether or not the water was already at a boil when the ammo was added, or if they just put the water over the fire and then dumped the ammo in right away. But for today's purposes, I'm just gonna go ahead and put the ammo in immediately. All right, here we go. 762 by 39 into the water. Put the lid on, retain some of that heat. Now, like I was saying, the theory is that since the ammo is immersed in water, it should prevent it from cooking off. If you guys don't know what that is, that's when you apply heat to ammunition, eventually it will reach a flash point and explode. Hopefully the water prevents that from happening. So, we're gonna leave this over the fire for about four hours. I'll have to come out periodically and probably refill the water as it boils off, keep the fire going, and uh, yeah, I'll check back in with you guys in about four hours and we'll see if boiling ammunition can actually deactivate it. Okay, update guys. Obviously our storm has passed. It didn't really rain too much, so it didn't affect the fire too badly. And we're coming up on almost four hours now. So let's go ahead and take a look at our little boiling ammo experiment and see how it's doing. Okay, let's pull the lid off, see what we got. Yep, it's boiling pretty good. Can't really see our ammo through all that steam, but uh, it's been boiling pretty good for about four hours now. Okay, I think it's time to go ahead and pull the pot off of the fire. We'll get rid of the boiling water and then let the rounds dry off a little bit and cool down. Then we'll go ahead and load them up in the AK and see if they function. What do you guys think? Do you think the Soviets might have had something? Is this actually a viable way of deactivating ammunition without leaving any visible traces? Or is this just one of those tall tales? Pause the video, let me know in the comment section down below. Oh 
Oh yeah, it is really, really hot. All right, let's see if we can dump the water out without dumping ammo on the ground. Ooh, that is hot. Hot, hot, hot. All right. There is 10 rounds of hard boiled 762 by 39 in there. Um, gonna let them cool down a little bit before I actually go to handle them, but just looking at them down in the pot, um, I'm seeing some rust on the casings already, and the actual bullets, the um, copper looks a lot more pale than it does out of the box. So we'll let these cool down, and then we'll give them a more thorough inspection. It's only been about five minutes or so, and already these rounds are nice and cool to the touch. They dried off pretty well also. So just looking at these, um, there is some rust spots on the casings on pretty much every round. It's hard to see, they're not very big, but they are starting to rust a little bit. Like I was saying, the copper jackets also look like they've been bleached. Uh, the color isn't nearly as vibrant as it was straight out of the box. So, you know, just visually looking at these, you can't tell that they've been tampered with. It just looks like they have not been stored properly, which that's to be expected, you know, if you're out in the desert, your ammunition probably isn't going to look uh, as pristine as it did straight off of the factory floor. So if you were a Soviet soldier trying to sell these hard boiled 762 by 39s to a merchant in Afghanistan, I don't think the merchant would suspect anything just by looking at these rounds. So, so far, this myth is holding up. You can hard boil ammo and not have it look like it's been tampered with. But the real question is, will these rounds fire? Let's put it to the test and find out. All right, time for the moment of truth. Will hard boiled 762 by 39 function the way it's supposed to? I'm gonna start off with just one round at a time. Then after each round, I'm going to give the gun a quick check, especially check to make sure that barrel is clear because if this ammo does malfunction, I don't wanna fire a follow-up shot if the bullet was to get lodged in the barrel. That would not be good. I'm also gonna kinda of hold the gun uh, out here away from me um, just because uh, when guns go boom is kind of Kentucky ballistics domain and I don't wanna to have to use my thumb today. So yeah, one round at a time, hold the gun out here, kinda of turn my head away and uh, hopefully it doesn't blow up. So let's find out. Does hard boiled 762 by 39 function the way it's supposed to? Round chambered. All right, here we go. Firing. Yeah. As expected, the gun seemed to function. I'm gonna go ahead and break it down off camera because YouTube doesn't like it when you take guns apart. I'm gonna break it down off camera, check it out, make sure everything's good, and then we'll come back and make sure that the first round was not a fluke. All right, check the gun out, check the barrel. No issues whatsoever, barrel is perfectly clear. That round functioned 100%. But as we continue forward, I'm still gonna do one round at a time for now, just to be extra, extra safe. But uh, like I said in the intro, modern ammunition is so resilient to environmental factors, I don't think these rounds were affected at all by the boiling procedure that we did. So, round number two. Here we go. Yep. Yeah. Yep. No issues whatsoever. Let's get some more ammo. All right, the gun checks out yet again. I'm just gonna go for it this time. I've loaded up all of our remaining hard-boiled 762 by 39, and uh, just gonna go for the mag dump, see what happens. Okay, we had malfunction there. Dead trigger. That was a live round that got ejected. Get another malfunction. Another live round got ejected. Interesting. I'm gonna check out those rounds, see what's going on here. All right, so here's three live rounds that did not go boom. And if we look at our primers, I don't know how well you guys can see, but all three of these primers are smashed pretty good. 
but the rounds did not go off. They were deactivated, I guess. That surprises me because I've been saying this whole video that, you know, modern ammunition is so resilient to environmental factors, but here, these rounds failed to function. That's interesting because some worked as we saw, but then these did not. Okay, so maybe there is something to this myth. I, 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 am, I am shocked right now, guys, because like I said, I, I did not expect this to have any effect on these rounds whatsoever, but these three appear to have been deactivated by our boiling procedure. Interesting, interesting. So despite all the research I did online, all the stuff I read saying that this myth really doesn't hold any water, and despite my own personal bias coming into this video, guys, I gotta say, if this was an episode of Mythbusters, we would have to call this myth plausible. Because even though most of the rounds that we boiled today fired just fine, these guys did not. So maybe there's some other reason why these rounds did not fire. Maybe the primers were already defective from the factory. Or maybe it's the boiling that we did to them that caused the primers to get dented, but no bang. So yeah, guys, we gotta call this myth plausible. And who knows, maybe if you boiled the ammo for longer, like let's say, you know, six, seven, eight hours or something like that. Maybe if you had a bigger, hotter fire, maybe it would work more consistently in deactivating every single round that you boil. So again, guys, despite what I thought coming into this video, we gotta call this thing plausible. So what did you guys think about today's little hard boiled ammo experiment? Do you think that the rounds that failed to fire were the result of just a manufacturing error, you know, bad primers or whatever? Or do you think it was because of the little boiling procedure that we did to them? Let me know in the comment section down below. Thanks so much for watching today's video. I appreciate you guys being here. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe, and to check out my merch store. And until next time, show me them firearms. Now this is absolutely going to tick the government off. That's kind of the whole point of the Second Amendment, and that's why we love it so much.